Good day and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Hinson Compton. Today we are here with the Director of Youth in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Ms. Mary Wilfred, as well as two youth workers, that's Ms. Keziah St. Bryce and Ms. Shilma Charles. And we want to talk a little bit about the program called the Youth Workers Program. Welcome to the program, ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Ms. Wilfred, you're no stranger to the program, but uh, before we get started to the meat of the matter, I want you to just talk about the role of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports for persons who may not already know. Okay, so the role of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is really to implement policies, um, programs, and activities that will benefit the young people of St. Lucia, specifically those engaged in sports and mm -hmm. those engaged in youth development. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we seek to um, engage young people throughout the communities, through clubs, through organizations, through um, different agencies in order to do that. Because as a ministry on our own, we are unable um, to meet you know, all the young people through mm -hmm. our own programming. So this is basically what we're all about, and that is to bring about a more sustainable and mm -hmm. a more prosperous nation. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, we want to talk about the Youth Worker Program. Mm -hmm. So before I get to the other two young ladies, just tell us a little bit about what the Youth Worker Program is, a little bit of its history, and why it came about. The Youth Workers um, program started in 2018 and that came on the heels of a Commonwealth Youth Ministers meeting that was held um, sometime in 2017 or thereabouts mm -hmm. and the Commonwealth advocated for young people to be engaged in youth work. They admitted that historically youth work had been um, voluntary but they were now um, advocating for um, paid youth work because youth work had now become an academic discipline. It mm -hmm. was practiced, um, it was premised on theory and it was practiced to the theoretical principles of youth work. So they had now engaged um, ministers of youth throughout the Commonwealth and shared the idea and based on what we wanted to see in youth development in St. Lucia, we felt that this idea would, be, um, would offer us a lot of benefits in that we can now do youth work in a very practical um, and in a, in, a, in a small geographic region that can impact um, young people. So these, um, the, the, these young people who were already volunteers in mm -hmm. their communities mm -hmm. and passionate about seeing things done among young people um, came in and said, yes, we are available. We want to do this because we've already been doing it. Mm -hmm. And we think that we have the skills, we have some of the competencies. Of course, we have more training mm -hmm. that we can offer um, the programs and offer some of the um, activities that are needed to help connect young people in school, out of school, young people in clubs, out of clubs, so that we can have more social cohesion in our communities. Mm. So yeah. this next question is for you, uh, Shilma, Ms. Charles. Uh, what do you consider your role as a youth worker? My role as a youth worker is basically to help push the mandates of the ministry. Uh, in our communities, we are expected to help work with young people, help develop them, help connect them to resources, help um, build opportunities for you, uh, you, uh, young persons in the community. Mm -hmm. um, youth workers are uh, very important in the various communities mm -hmm. because we have young people who are unattached. And so our role is to, like I said, connect them, help build them up, um, mm -hmm. um, help expose them to the different opportunities. Yes. Well, I, I, this question is really for the two of you. What regions mm -hmm. do you both work in? I am the youth worker for Viewfort South, and mm -hmm. by Viewfort South, I will specify cantonment, um, La Richeuse, De Bois, De Mon, La Tony, <laughs> <laughs> Cedar Heights, Black Bay, Viewfort Town. That's, that's quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Sandbrass. Okay, well, 
Well, I'm responsible for Castry Central as mm -hmm. well as Castry North. So from Castry Central, uh, um, Grass Street, CDC, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the area surrounding, and also Castry North, that's La Clary, Bizet, mm -hmm. um, Mondido, Babatat, those areas. Do you, you find that a little overwhelming? Because these are so many um, <laughs> parts of the country that we're talking about. Well, once you understand your community, mm -hmm. once you've done your assessment, you connect with the young people, it may seem a lot to you, but it's few for south for me. <laughs> 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 yes. Would, you, would either of you consider that maybe you need more... Uh, more youth workers to come and volunteer? Yes, of course, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, especially yes. in my yes. zone, because mm -hmm. Castries Central and Castries North, it seems fairly close, but then the dynamics of these mm -hmm. two communities are so vast that it seems like two totally different communities. So there's so many young people in this area, so we try to do as much to impact all of them, but since it's such a wide range, the more assistance given, the better, the more young people we can impact. Do you have something you want to say? And while we're youth workers, it's just the two of us, mm -hmm. there are other youth workers who may face challenges. Different mm -hmm. communities come with different topographies. And when you look mm -hmm. at Shrozel, how mm -hmm. large Shrozel mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. difficult for one youth worker to be able to reach out to all corners. Mm -hmm. And you know, when it comes to mobilizing young people, it can be a challenge. So yes, there is a, a need for mm -hmm. more youth workers. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll get to some of what you said in a little bit. Um, Ms. Wilfred, mm -hmm. as uh, how would you, how does someone get into youth work? Or how would you, how would you um, encourage persons to get into it? Okay, so um, less than 10 years ago, subject to correction, because youth work began emerging, it began, it, it was an emerging academic discipline. Mm -hmm. Young people began to take advantage of courses that were offered um, by various organizations. I remember in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, the Commonwealth Youth um, Center, see why um, it was in Guyana at the time, and they were offering diplomas in youth, in, 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 in youth development. And so for now, the um, University of the West Indies Open Campus, they were they, they offering a degree in, 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 in youth development. Mm -hmm. And many of our young people uh, have been or are taking advantage. I believe Shomer is currently a, a student who's pursuing youth development as a major, and sometimes they have minors mm -hmm. to it. So these young people, they've done a bit of that work. They have some level of certification, mm -hmm. and they would indicate their interest in joining the program um, because of their certification, their volunteerism, and just a, a, a passion to see their communities transform for the better. Okay. So if they are interested, they can either come into the ministry or they can call us at 468-4991 as to speak to the director. And then we are able to, you know, have a conversation because we certainly need more young people mm -hmm. in that program so that we can be, a, we are able to reach and impact the communities that are more, more, more scattered. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. we're actually due for our first break, so I, I hope you stay with me so we can discuss a lot more about the youth program. Certainly. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Oi, you realize you step on my toe? Well, do something about it. Uh. Gasai, burst in the man. Hold on. If somebody try to cross you, Hold and if Martin start to take you, Hold no need for war or violence, cause the police there to help you. Hold if a trouble start in this session, alright, no need for aggression. We don't want no violence in the place. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boys, Studio 758, Acid Creations, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm your host, Jacques Hinson Compton, and we're talking about the Youth Worker Program. So before we left, uh, Ms. Wilfred Schumer mentioned that you had been undergoing a lot of training at, um, as a youth worker. Just talk to us a little bit about that. Okay, where do I begin? Um, 
<laughs> yes, yes. We do take a lot of training and the ministry always try to get, engage us in those opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so, so some of our training would include um, with the, uh, we did youth work, essentials in youth work. Mm -hmm. And it was a very compact and interesting um, program where we learn about the history of youth work, what is expected of youth work, how to engage young people and how to prepare ourselves for the practice. and. Um, that this and we there were so many other agencies and other um, um, organizations who have reached out we've done extensive training with um, USAID for example mm -hmm. and that's just to name a few and the ministry itself would have had um, training within the department for us youth workers and yes. in addition to that um, well we have you focus in the south and you focus in the northern mm -hmm. um, parts of the country with two different supervisors. So mm -hmm. for the northern aspect, um, every Thursday, the supervisor engage the northern youth workers in training. So mm -hmm. it's a continuous training. We're doing policies, strategies, mm -hmm. transit mm -hmm. walks, community profiling, different areas. So it's basically continuous to help develop us as we go along. Uh, that leads me to another question. What sort of, would you say, maybe both academic and personal um, personality trait would you say is required for you to be a youth worker? I would say a personality trait of patience, one, <laughs> understanding, and somebody that is very personal. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to relate to people. You cannot go to a community of young people and expect them to give you positive feedback if you are very negative. So you need to have that positive energy, someone that wants to make a difference. So you don't have to mm -hmm. be ambitious. You need to be there. So you know, you know, you are a young pe person, you know the challenges you face, you know that young people like yourself face similar challenges. Mm -hmm. So you have to go there with a mindset that you know you mm -hmm. want to help and mm -hmm. want to make a difference. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, that also leads me to my next question. What sort of activities, mm -hmm. I mean, you can both answer because mm -hmm. you, from different communities, they will have mm -hmm. your different respective activities. What sort of activities do you undertake? as a youth worker? So first of all, let me add that there are different youth workers. Each youth worker would have had their own, um, their own decorate, um, decoration of skills and mm -hmm. ideas that would address their community needs. Mm -hmm. And so we have um, different activities. So for example, with me in Viewfort, we have the YET program, Youth Enhancement Training. Mm -hmm. We have other activities that target um, skill development, we have, um, say for example, just out of youth work, I was able to form the Jollity Youth Club. Mm -hmm. So now I have a, a, a group of young people, young children from the ages from nine to 18, who are now training to be young leaders. Mm -hmm. And now we even have young persons asking how could they be part of the Youth and Sports Council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is basically developing activities, addressing studying, because you know youth work is a, is a, is a social science. So mm -hmm. we, it, we continue studying what is needed in our communities. And what about? So for me, I like to take a holistic approach. So it's not just sports. So if you have sporting programs, then we have capacity building trainings. Even I believe last year, Shema and okay. myself, we collaborated That's on a right. soap making training where persons literally had a hands-on experience in literally making soap. Um, I also do trainings in mental capacity, leadership training. We also do hamper donations mm -hmm. because if mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. are not fed or you're hungry, mm -hmm. then you cannot focus in a training or how mm -hmm. to develop your skills. Mm -hmm. So it's a holistic approach, feeding programs, um, mm -hmm. as I said, hampers, trainings, mental health, how to care for your body, so hygiene, mm -hmm. social development. Mm -hmm. So it's a holistic approach. And we're even looking to do a tax training because we find that a lot of young persons do not know about taxes or how to file your taxes. Mm. So that's another training I'm looking into. So it's a lot of different life skills that yes, you are training persons yes, for. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned mm -hmm. the YET, the Youth Enhancement Training. Mm -hmm. It's a training basically to help young people develop their interpersonal skills, their soft skills, employability skills. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a multifaceted approach to help young people identify themselves and to build themselves up improve competences in different areas. Now, I guess, again, both of you could answer this question. What, are you, what do you find are the major challenges mm -hmm. of being a youth worker? 
Well, this one is a <laughs> this one is a question that we often discuss amongst ourselves. One of our challenges right now is getting young people involved. Um, you find young people are now distracted by um, social media mm -hmm. and so forth. And what used to be before, you have we used to have active clubs and groups. Now it is a challenge to get young people to regain interest and to redevelop those youth groups, those mm -hmm. clubs, and so forth. Uh, For me, I would say lack of resources. Not lack, of, limited, because mm -hmm. we have resources. It's just mm -hmm. that the amount of people that you want to reach right. with the amount of resources, it does not compare. Um, so let's say trainings, right? I'm a firm believer of entrepreneurship and, you know, getting, making yourself employable. So let's say we do a training, for example, let's go back to the soup making, mm -hmm. right? We could have only facilitated a small amount, well, a good amount just because we did not have as much resources because it's uh, quite expensive to get the material. Mm -hmm. So as, let's say, we wanted to reach 100 or even 300 persons, because we do not have as much resources, we would not be able to reach so many. So I would say la limited resources is one of the main okay. challenges. Uh, would you say that you've, either of you have seen very positive outcomes as a result of your work? Yes, yes, yes. I consider that, but I'd like to also add that mm -hmm. results, uh, it, it cannot be shown, it cannot be exposed yeah. instantly because with mm -hmm. your work is a process. Mm -hmm. You, you help them develop the skills and you monitor, you evaluate, and over a period of time, sometimes yes. years, maybe today we, we um, pr um, conduct a, a soap making um, workshop and 15 years down the road, we see this young lady selling soap. <laughs> <laughs> and with, um, although it's long term sometimes, sometimes you can see short term results. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was working with this young man who is very talented, mm -hmm. but he was very shy. So he'd write poetry, mm -hmm. music, and everything, but he was afraid to show off his work. And you know, I was working with him, and I had this program, a uh, mini concert for young people, and he actually came up and he read one of his poems, mm -hmm. and it was an mm -hmm. original piece, and everyone was so fascinated by the level of competence that he had. So sometimes you see the results sooner rather than right. later. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Okay, we're actually due for our second and final break. Uh, <laughs> please, again, please stay with me. <laughs> we have a, a little bit more to discuss. Okay. Okay. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back to Issues and Answers, and we're talking about the Youth Worker Program at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Uh, so while we were off camera, we were talking about some of the needs that you have been able to assess as youth workers in your different communities. Have you specific, talk about specific examples of things that you've seen and you took the initiative to address it? Okay, so as youth workers, um, sometimes we try to collaborate because, you know, stronger together. Mm -hmm. um, there was this instance where there was a house fire and a young family lost everything. So we came together as youth workers and we contributed. We sourced clothing items, food items, cleaning products, house items, and then we went down to Soufre, Fossil Jack to be specific, and mm -hmm. we went to the family and then we gave them a lot of items and they were so happy yeah. that, you know, they could have received that from young persons mm -hmm. like ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, in addition to that, um, the hamper drives is something that we youth workers seem to collaborate a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, we have needy families. And being that we work in different communities, we share ideas. We sh um, we, like, I may see something in my communities and seek the advice of my other youth workers. And they too will seek their resources to help build up mm -hmm. the need that is in my community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Wufra, this qu next question is actually mm -hmm. for you. Um, what is the extent of the support that uh, your ministry would have to give to the youth workers? And, and not just your own support. Do you mm -hmm. get cross-sectoral yes. support from the yes. say, private sector? Yes, yes. Um, I believe just recently we held a series of um, sexual yes. health workshops mm -hmm. and we got um, support from Massey, we got support from mm. Peter and Company, we got support from, um, I can't remember, other, but we got mm -hmm. um, support from the private sector. We've also, sometimes if there are hampers as well, we got some support from stores like Massey Distribution. And these young people, they take their own initiatives. They don't, it's not something that they ask of the ministry as a team. They see, because these young people are from these needy families. Mm -hmm. So while they may be working with a young person who have mm -hmm. come to their camp or who attended their mm -hmm. activity, mm -hmm. they also know that that family is in need. And so they would mobilize their resources and to help, to help mm -hmm. that family. It's true, because yeah, sometimes so. you come with one agenda. So let's say today you say, okay, I'm doing a hygiene training. Mm -hmm. And you realize that, you know, there's someone going through depression or trauma, mm -hmm. then we make recommendations because we have a virtual counseling going on. So yes. we recommend, yes. and you know, sometimes you come with one agenda and then you end up seeing so many other problems that you can try to resolve. And connecting to other agencies. So these young people, as they go through the schools and the communities, they would encounter young people who are at the verge of dropping out mm -hmm. or you know young people in difficult mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. that they they, they can't they can live mm -hmm. in under the safety and security of their homes mm -hmm. so that is when the ministry intervene and connect them to you know other mm -hmm. ministries that can assist them or provide um, tutors or have mm -hmm. a principal or a teacher to have a discussion with that young man or that young woman so they stay in school so these are some of the things that they spot out a lot of the vulnerable they would identify mm -hmm. them and to see ways they can strengthen because youth work is a lot about getting young people into constructive pathways right. now once young people are engaged <coughs> in something that is constructive they love it they mm -hmm. see how they can benefit uh, how their family how they, they benefit themselves their family and their community you have them all on sure. and that is what that initiative is about how do we get our young people mm -hmm. engaged how we get them to right. participate yes. and get them to see this is my community this is where i live this is where i work mm -hmm. and this is where my children would live this is where my generations would be what can i do to make it better so yeah and you find like when you help somebody mm -hmm. they want to help as well because right. we currently having a clothes donation mm -hmm. and the amounts of clothing items that we got donated was remarkable shoes bed sheets so many different items so persons give back so that other mm -hmm. persons can receive as yes. well so if if certain people listening to this program wanted to donate uh depending on the situation how would they do so Okay, so for the clothing drive, it's in collaboration with Kashi Central Defense Sports Council, the Ministry, and Youth Advocacy Movement. So if they do want to donate, they could just send us a message on the Council's page or Youth Advocacy Movement, which is Yam St. Lucia SLU. You can reach us Instagram, Facebook, either one. You have many options, so you can <laughs> go ahead and reach out. Uh, do you find it quite a challenge to have to deal with vulnerable groups as Ms. Wilfred mentioned earlier? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it a challenge. Mm -hmm. I would just say it's very sensitive. So you have to use mm -hmm. a specific or strategic approach in how you go about dealing with it because you do not want the person to lose trust mm -hmm. or lose faith in you. So you have to be super mm -hmm. strategic in dealing with those situations. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Charles, you wanted to say, mention mm -hmm. something? Actually, in um, addition to Kaziah, um, I wish to add that with Youth for Self, for, for example, um, another thing is that Youth Work, before I add, Youth Work allows us to work collaboratively with the National mm -hmm. Youth Council. 
and it helps both partners, both agencies work together to push the mandate mm -hmm. or the focus or the main objective of youth development. And so um, with that said, just adding that uh, in my community view for South, the uh, Youth and Sports Council, um, we do have a Facebook page as well. And um, we're also welcoming persons in the community to support the council and um, it be it groceries or food, whichever you may have to donate, you can reach us through there and mm -hmm. with the number that is provided on the page as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you all, the two of you are obviously very passionate about <laughs> your work. Um, yes. How did I mean, both of you could answer this. How did you get into it? What made you <laughs> What made you want to get into youth work? Youth work started for me from a young age. I grew up in a community back then, Viewfort. Um, it's, it's known as the Bacale, mm -hmm. where um, you know sports clubs were a thing then, and we, um, as children, it could be bringing water for somebody, being um, going to a young person, asking them. Are you okay? Youth work starts mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. But we grew up into developing youth work as a profession. Mm -hmm. So youth work started for me um, through the Youth and Sports Council. And again, from a former youth worker who, glide, who, who showed us the way to grow and develop as young, individual, young individuals, a molding process. And so um, youth work started for me from being exposed to a youth worker. Mm. That's my, my path to, to youth work. Mm -hmm. uh, um, professional youth work. Mm -hmm. So this is where youth work started for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for me, um, from a very young age, I was always involved in feeding the poor. You know, because like, you know, when you're young, you yeah. know, when you go to church events, well, that's what they were calling it, feeding the poor program. <laughs> <laughs> so I was always excited to go and help, you know, clean people's house, you know, painting and mm -hmm. so forth. And I guess, I, you know, I, that's how I grew up. So I always had that passion for it. And I'm someone I like to be involved in multiple things. So like when I was in school, all clubs I would join because, you know, I love music, arts, and, you know, everything mm -hmm. of that sort. So mm -hmm. I would always be involved. So when school is done, you know, I needed other groups to join. So I started with joining clubs. And then it got to a point where I was in probably over 20 groups. I'm probably now in 15, <laughs> but it was that point. And then, so before I got into it professionally, I was always at the ministry, you know, mm -hmm. yes, trying to yes, get yes, a donation, right. yeah. trying yes, to, yes, <laughs> and yes. then with that, I got yes. exposed to Mrs. Yes. Miss Wilfred, and from there, yeah. it just continued. So it's like the love for it and helping someone, seeing a smile on someone's face, it actually drives me. So I feel as if I'm not even at work, to be honest. Because I feel as if, you know, I'm just doing what yes. I have. So that's mm -hmm. how I got into mm -hmm. you folks. Well, we've actually come to the end of our program. I want to thank all three of you mm -hmm. for discussing at length something very important. I learned a lot today. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much. And I, I hope you welcome. actually come back again at another time. Ms. Wilfred has been on before. <laughs> she seems to enjoy my company. So I hope, yeah. <laughs> I hope the two of you show up again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Thank you for watching.